There we go. Technically challenging. I'm talking about Periscope. OK. <laughs> we'll try this again. I love the words to that song, because if you really think about the Friends show, and you think about what it's about, you know, that song starts out with, no one ever told you life was going to be this way. Your job's a joke, you're broke, and your love life's DOA. It's like you're always stuck in second gear because it hasn't been your day, your week, or your year. Think about that. Because you know that happened to me. You know, my life wasn't supposed to look like this. I had a completely different picture plan of what my life was going to look like. And it changed in 2013. So for those of you that do know me and those who don't know me, let me just back up and share a little bit about my story. In uh, April of 2013, my husband, who I'd been with for 30 years, was diagnosed with terminal cancer. And in eight months, I found myself a widow. I had lived a life of 25 years of being a wife and a mom in a world that did not involve working in the corporate world, because I left that. And I was busy raising humans. I have a daughter who's 21 and a son who's 28. Um, I'll let you do the math. No, I was not 12 when I started having children. So. But my life wasn't supposed to look like that. I had a different picture for that. But it changed. And somehow, I had to do something different. So today, I'm going to talk to you about how I created my own morning talk show. Because that's what I wanted to do. And somehow, this happened. So let me back up and tell you that you know, after my husband passed, eight months later, I did what anybody would do. I started my own company. Right? By now, you probably know that I'm crazy. So, but, and I didn't even start it legitimately, because it didn't feel legit. You know, I, I had an opportunity to freelance for HarperCollins uh, Christian Publishing, and in order for me to get a paycheck, they don't contract with individuals. You have to be a vendor. So I had to do this thing called set up a company? Like, what is that? So I happened to call the attorney who did all of our probate estate and say, I'm supposed to set up something for payment of, it goes, oh, oh yeah, you got to form an LLC. What is that? So it didn't even feel legitimate. I met him at a, at a Shoney's. We had breakfast. I signed papers, and he said, here you go. You've got your own company. And I went, really? OK. So then there was this whole new thing called social media. You know, I worked in radio for eight years, but that was back in the day. You know, it was advertising. It was marketing. But we used Arbitron and Nielsen, and we had quarterly ratings. This thing called social media moves fast. And I had no idea what it was. So I got on Facebook and Twitter and YouTube and Instagram, because they're like the popular ones, right? We're, we're supposed to get on them somehow. So I did. And for most of you that follow me, you know I use the hashtag of clueless something, because I'm always clueless doing something, but I'm trying to figure it out. And I did it on Instagram, because I, have, I love pictures. And I thought, what a great way to tell a story. And I have a collection of coffee cups. And I thought, what? Well, that's kind of fun. With all the travels, my husband was a, a lighting designer uh, for very big tours. And we traveled a lot. And so the easiest way to bring home a souvenir was a coffee cup or a Christmas ornament. So I have three cabinets in my kitchen full of coffee cups. And I thought, well, how fun. I could feature a coffee cup of the day. So my hashtag was Ronnie's Coffee Cups. You can still look it up on Twitter, and, I mean, on Instagram and find my pictures. And I thought, well, how fun. Would that be? So I did that. And I wanted to try Snapchat, but dear God. <laughs> and when they started doing the face swap, I was like, oh, dear God. <laughs> and I told my daughter, I was like, what is this? And she's like, Mom, please. And I said, well, I I'm really trying to figure it out. And she goes, Mom, like, all the grown-ups ruin social media. <laughs> I said, OK. She goes, and I hate to tell you this, I, I love you and all your friends, but some of them look really dumb on Snapchat. OK? She goes, because mom, that's really our platform. And it is. It's like the 18 to 22 year olds. So if you really want to learn it and you want to get a hold of it, great. But let me tell you, they're watching you. And if you look dumb, they tell all their friends about it. <laughs> so I backed away from that one, OK? But then I found something that worked. <laughs> and I got on Periscope. And that number has changed because as of this morning, I'm at 1,700,580 likes. That means one person touching the screen that many times, letting you know that they like you. And I went, 
really? So that's me. I'm on Periscope. And, uh, you know, I started back when Periscope was in beta test. It was in April of, in fact, about this time last year. And it started off really clunky. It didn't have all of the features that it has now. But they were really trying to figure out how this thing works. It hadn't even gone to the Android market yet because there was a young lady that was working desperately trying to code it for Android. But the guy that started it on iPhone was fantastic. So he was, as, as it was going in beta test, he would get feedback from people and they were adding features to it. So I thought, I can do this because I like to talk to myself. I talk to myself all the time. So you just turn it on and nobody's sitting in front of you. So if nobody sees you, it's not that big of a deal, okay? So my first broadcast was May 15th. 2015. And you know what it looked like? So I'm on this thing and I'm walking around the homeschool conference. So here we are guys, like here's our vendor booths and so, oh yeah, wait, hold on. Okay, so I'm back now and, I've, and I had four people on that were probably from like Uzbekistan or something, probably didn't even understand me. And I started this whole thing on Periscope, okay? Well then I got an idea. I wonder what could I do that was me? What could I do that would be fun, that would make people want to sit and talk to me? And I thought, wait a minute, I have my coffee cup. I love drinking coffee, and I love talking about things in the morning. So I thought, I wonder what I could do. Well, that's how this was born. I have a show, Monday through Friday, 7.02 a.m. Central, 8.02 Eastern Time. And I sit and talk to people in the morning. I know they're getting up. I know they're getting ready. Moms are getting their kids out of bed. People are getting in the car listening, and they're heading to their jobs that they probably hate. Or there's moms out there who are sitting wanting someone to talk to and wish they had someone that they could hear that would encourage them in the morning. And I thought, you know what? I can do that. So my show starts off with me pouring a cup of coffee in my featured cup of the day. And I just talk to people, how you doing? And I invite them to come and sit down at my coffee table and have some coffee with me. I tell people to grab a cup, let's sit down, let's get some encouragement before we have to head out and face our day. And that's how Coffee Talk was born. My first broadcast was May 19th. I will celebrate one year on Periscope, May 19th, with Coffee Talk. And I'm very excited. You know, when I first started doing it, I didn't pay attention to the numbers. I didn't care, because if you do, it'll scare you. Because if you pay attention to the numbers, if you look and there's only six people on, you're going to go, wow, there's only six people listening to me. I need to stop doing this. Oh, no one's listening to me right now. Well, that's okay. It's called practice. Now, when I log on, I have anywhere from 45 to 85 people that log on every morning and spend 30 minutes with me. Now, you want to know how many people that is? Count how many people are in this room. Would you be able to assemble 40 to 85 people at 7 o'clock in the morning to listen to you for 30 minutes? I was shocked, trust me. But I did it every single day, and I watched the numbers improve. So I checked my stats the other day. I was actually surprised, because I really don't pay attention to this, because if I do and I get caught up in the numbers, that's what's going to defeat me, because it's not about the numbers. I don't care. I'm not chasing the numbers. I'm doing this for me, okay? So I was like, I have 1,000 people following me? A thousand people. A th I want you to get your head around that. A thousand people are following me. This number has changed. In fact, today, in fact, the broadcast, hi to all my peeps that are watching on Periscope, 371 episodes, each 30 minutes long. 371 episodes. I've been doing this for a year. Didn't really think much about it, I just kept doing it. And I checked my stats the other day because I wanted to get a picture so I could show you guys, and I was shocked. I've had to block 39 weirdos. <laughs> you know, the ones that get on your periscope and go, boobies! <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow, we don't talk about that on my scope, okay? But I'm following some amazing people. I'm following, a, 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 he's a, a professor in Rome and he takes you into some of the most amazing places in Rome. We're sitting out on the palazzo having sunset. I follow some people in Hawaii who, sh who help me remember my home. I sit and watch the ocean waves on Waikiki Beach or in Hanama Bay. Um, you can travel and be anywhere with Periscope and connect with people. In London, I watched the Westminster Abbey bells ring 
for Queen Elizabeth's birthday. Periscope connects you to things in life you never thought possible, okay? So, why does it work for me? I can use my phone to broadcast anywhere at any time, so watch out, because I'm going to be doing it this weekend. And I may just run up to you and go, check it out, look what I'm doing. It's great. You have it on your phone. You can broadcast anywhere. You don't need to carry a big, a big camera. You don't have to have all the new technology. It's on your phone, okay? It's interactive. I would rather have 10 people that I interact with and have a relationship with than to wonder if everybody's looking at me. It's not about being seen. I like the relationship. I like the interaction with Periscope. I get on in the morning. I've got a woman and a woman in Montreal who's raising two toddlers who checks in every morning because she needs that connection to a group. Okay? I've got people that are connected with me and I talk to them in the morning. I tell them good morning. I ask them how they're doing. And they get to tell me. And that's awesome. I love that. It's automatically connected to Twitter. So whenever you go live, Twitter tells the world. And it's great. You can even set up something on a, a site called IFTTT, if, then, if, if this, then that. And you can set up a recipe to post it to other places. So it's great because you're cross-promoting yourself. I can repurpose the content. Again, guys, 371 30-minute episodes that I can go back to and pull content from. Write about it, talk about it, share it again. Okay? It's a lot of content that I didn't even think about that I have in my arsenal. It helps me develop personal speaking skills. You know, last time I spoke on the launch out stage was shortly after my husband passed and I was an emotional wreck. I watched that video the other day. I was like, oh, people actually listen to me? What? But it's helped me get better at doing this. It's helped me get a little more confidence in speaking in front of a group. And it's helped me build an organically curated community. In fact, and she doesn't know that I'm going to do this. But there's someone sitting in the audience here who connected with me through Periscope. She doesn't know anyone in this room, but she knows me. And one day, was it about a week, two weeks ago, Jean, I shared about the Launch Out Conference. I talked about what Launch Out was, what it did, and what it could do for someone. And the next thing I knew after I got off that broadcast, she sent a message and said, I just registered for the conference. I hadn't even met her yet. And Jean found out about me from a writer's conference in Florida. I wasn't there, but my sweet friend Bethany Jett was. And Bethany was talking about live streaming. And little did I know, she used my show as an example in her presentation. That's how Jean found out about me. So Jean, I do this with some of my people, but I have something for you. Because I like to give out coffee cups, too. So everybody, I want you to meet Jean Wyland. That's for you. Okay. That's what social media can do. If it connects you to one person where you can make a difference, it's a Nashville cup, baby. So now you have a little piece of Nashville to take home with you. So Jean is here to sit amongst us and learn about what we're doing and launching. Jean is a writer, and, she, and so I met her today. But we've been in relationship online for several weeks now. She's part of my Coffee Talk group. I have a Facebook group of 260 people that join the group where we continue the conversation about what I talk about on my show. It's amazing, OK? So an organically built community, that's what I care about. Do I care if I have 5,000 people follow me? Not really. Because it's the ones like this that matter, OK? So is there a future for Periscope? You know, there's a lot of talk right now going on, especially with Facebook going live with live streaming. Because of course, Periscope's been doing it, so we got to do it too. OK, I can tell you what. Facebook is going to figure out a way to make you pay for it soon, OK? Periscope, Facebook live streaming, so you know what I say? Who cares? Pick one and get good at it. You want to be on Periscope? Get on Periscope. You want to do Facebook live streaming? Facebook live stream. With everything that's going on with Catch, you know, I got all those episodes, I got to migrate to my YouTube channel. That's going to blow my YouTube channel up. Did I want to go on YouTube? Not really. I've been dragging my feet about it for a long time, but guess what? I got to now. But who knows what that's going to do? 
but I have 371 episodes that are getting ready to launch on my YouTube channel. What is that going to do? Well, let me tell you what else is on the future for Periscope, because I bet you guys didn't know about this. You're going to love this. So the NFL just signed a very big deal with Twitter exclusively, because they're going to start interacting with their fans live. They didn't sign with Facebook. They signed with Twitter. And they're going to be bringing Thursday night football live stream. And what I really loved in that article was this part. In addition to live streaming video of NFL action, the partnership includes in-game highlights as well as pre-game periscope broadcasts from players and teams, giving fans an immersive experience before, during, and after games. Most of y'all know, and Jared and, and Ryan, I wish Ryan was here because he'd be so proud. I don't sports. <laughs> but guess what? I do now. In fact, thanks to the wonderful man that's in my life now, who patiently taught me about football this last season, I learned about things like intentional holding. I learned about the improper use of hands, which I already knew about that and knew how to deal with that a long time ago. I was like, I know what I would do to someone if they reached up in my shirt and grabbed me like that. They wouldn't have any arms left. But I learned about football. In fact, I learned about football so much that I'm excited for the NFL draft. And you know what I'm really excited about? The blow up that's going to happen on Periscope when all those NFL fans hit that social media platform. And guess what? I'm already there. In fact, who knows? I could hit 2 million. And when you're ranked that high, who knows? Maybe that's why I needed to learn football this year. Because now I get to sports. <laughs> and I need to talk about football. So imagine the interaction that's going to happen with players and teams and coaches and the interaction that's going to have for their fans. The NFL's not stupid. And it was an exclusive deal signed. So is there a, a future for Periscope? I think so. So what's in my future? Well, who knows? Did I start out wanting to have a talk show? Not really. I'm an editor. I work with words. But this was a fun thing that I did on my own that could be mine, that was legitimate, that was born out of my own experience and my own heart. Because it was a healing process. For those of you that followed me last year, I finished my backyard. It was the last thing my late husband and I had planned. And I walked through that process with everyone, and I let them see me as I finished that last thing that we had set out together to do. And I sat in my backyard, and I cried about it, and I talked about it, and I shared my heart. And ever since then, I've had an amazing community of people follow me that I get to talk to every morning. It blesses my soul, and I hope I bless them. So what's in it for me? I don't know. But as long as there's morning, and as long as there's coffee, there's going to be Coffee Talk with Ronnie, and I hope you'll come to join me sometime. Oh. Sorry. Great job. Great job. I know it has been a very long journey for her to sport. So I'm really glad to hear that she's sportsing. Uh, <laughs> Well, my biggest takeaways there, uh, I really enjoyed uh, Snapchat, Snapchat scares me, me too, so uh, I'm glad to hear that I'm not alone. I love the question that she asked toward the beginning of the presentation, what can I do that is me? I thought that was a great question for us to reflect on this entire, as we think of the things that we're doing, is this me? Or if I want to do it, why and how can I make this me? Does it fit me? Uh, and then, of course, if you are on Periscope, you do understand, block all the weirdos who yell boobies. <laughs> so true. So true. Uh, speaking of sports, you may be familiar with the wonderful podcast section known as Sports Go Sports from the podcast Remodeling Clay, which you can find wherever finer podcasts are sold. Clay 